the uh, five levels of development of maturity um, are, and I'm not going to write those on the, yeah, I'm not going to do that right now, but it is infants, toddlers, youth, teenagers, and adults. Those are kind of the five groups. Now, those are natural terminology. Uh, the Bible mainly talks about three groups necessarily, but um, we're going to throw in the, the toddlers and the teenagers into that also because the Bible talks mainly about infants and then uh, more, more, more mature and then full mature or adults. But I want to talk about these different levels, all right? Now, first off, infants. So let's define each one of these. So infants, what defines an infant? Well, first off, an infant has total dependency. They don't know anything. They're brand new. And, and now they may come in with some baggage from somewhere else. You know, maybe they were taught differently. Maybe they were new age or maybe they were, uh, you know, they got sacred cows that came with them, some traditions of men. And I understand that. But if they just got born again, then technically, spiritually, they don't, uh, they're not expected to know things. Isn't that right? And too often, we just throw them in with everybody else and expect everybody to know the same thing. And, you know, that's one of the biggest problems in humans is that we expect everybody to know the same thing we know and come from the same place we came from. And we expect them to think the same way we do because of where we come from and what we've experienced. And that's not ever a good way to go because you don't know where people come from, right? Uh, so to uh, infants have total dependency. Uh, they need love and tenderness, right? There is usually very little. Now, they may need a whole lot of correction, but there's usually very little correction going on at the time because mainly what they need is love and acceptance, and, and they need to know that, okay, you're in the family, and there's a process, and you're going to go through the process, and we're with you in it. Amen? They don't need to be beat up on or spanked at that point. Now, see, the spanking comes later, right? When they become toddlers, you know, two-year-olds and things like that. That's where that comes in. So, so the next level is for toddlers. Toddlers, uh, the most repeated word to toddlers is? No. no, exactly. There you go. And that's the same way it is in church, all right? So pretty much the way it should be. Why? Because they have to be trained. They, they don't know. And now notice, training means discipline. They have to be trained, and training means repetition. And so that's how you, you constantly have to reinforce, reinforce, reinforce. No, we don't do that. We do this. Do this. Do that. Get busy doing this. You want to have time to do that. And so there's a reinforce. Those are toddlers, toddlers, okay? Now, the next one is youth. Now, the youth, by this time, they know somewhat how to dress themselves, right? You some would sometimes might question that. But they would know how to dress themselves, how to tie their shoes, how to kind of get ready. They're starting to recognize uh, well, and I should say, even like with infants and even some of the toddlers, they're totally self-oriented. Everything's about them, and they don't want that toy until the other child has it. Then they got to have it, right? And, and now, understand, I'm talking about the physical uh, levels of maturity, but you can already see how this goes right over into the spiritual. Amen? And so with... Uh, Youth, they dress themselves, they tie their shoes, they have basic, and you start giving them basic responsibilities for themselves, all right? They come to you for prayer, you ask them, have, have you already prayed about this? Have you already, what have you done? In other words, don't just run to somebody else. What have you done? What, how have you tried to fix your situation yourself? Why? Because now they're youth, and they're starting to recognize there's other people in the world besides them, somewhat. Now, they, they, they don't live by that, but they know it, right? And then the next one is uh, teenagers, okay? Now, here's the thing. By the time they get to be teenagers, and I'm talking about physically or in the spirit, by the time they get to be teenagers, if they have been trained correctly, you have a lot less problems with them. If they weren't trained correctly, you have a lot of problems with them. Why? Because the number one characteristic of teenagers is rebellion. Why? They're pushing boundaries, they want to know where the boundaries are. They want to know why the boundaries are. And so they're constantly pushing. And then there's this the thing where they start to come alive, you might say, to sin, to where they start to recognize certain things and they start to explore things and they start to move into these areas. And so rebellion, rebellion. Now listen, rebellion isn't ignorance. See, you can be ignorant of something and be excused by it. That's what God said. He said in times past, he winked at their ignorance, right? 
But now that they know, he said, now they're accountable. And so with teenagers, teenagers, it's not just they don't know. They're not just ignorant. They know. But now they're moving into rebellion and they have to be kind of corralled, right? And they have to be taught which is the right way to go. Now, we're talking about this from the position of development. But you could also go by the characteristics and look backwards and say, okay, which of these characteristics do you have? Because if you match up the characteristics, you'll know your spiritual level of development. Now, everybody thinks they're spiritual giants. Everybody thinks they're spiritually mature. Everybody thinks they got it. it. But if you really want to know the truth, ask your wife. She'll tell you. And so now, now, but you can ask somebody else anyway. And they'll, and they'll usually tell you where you're at, all right? But now, notice, the next level up, okay, is adults. Now, how do you know when a person is an adult or whenever they, when a Christian is an adult Christian? Well, they start to think about others more than themselves. That's one of the main characteristics. Why? Because that's a characteristic of love. But, okay, they're also learning See, before this, they're learning to help themselves. They're, they're learning things. Oh, that'll help me do this. Oh, that'll help me do that. Oh, that'll help me get healed. Or that'll help me get free of this or whatever it is. But when you're mature and you learn, you're thinking in terms of how can I use that to help somebody else? And so one of the aspects of maturity is you're starting to think of others. You realize you're definitely not the only person in the universe and the universe doesn't revolve around you. And so they're learning to, they're also learning from a position of practice. In other words, they're doing it and they're learning so they can practice. So you come so you can learn more, so you can do more, and not so you can go under more condemnation for not doing, right? Because that's not the, the whole point. The whole point of teaching is to help you grow because the more you know and the more you do correctly, the better your life is. It's just that simple. Now, I'm not saying you're not going to have problems, I'm not going to say, you're not going to have tribulation and trials and all that. Just saying that the more, what I'm saying is this, you can alleviate a whole lot of unnecessary suffering by learning and putting into practice what the Word of God says, Amen. right? And so at least then, um, if you look at certain things, you realize, okay, well, I, I know God's not doing this to me. I know he's not doing this to try to teach me something. I know I'm doing this. I know I'm not living this way. So this is obviously from the devil. So you start to learn these things. You, you, as Hebrew says, that we can discern between good and evil. Why? Because we have, we've had our senses exercised to discern good and evil. Now, 